you are almost certainly the one who inspires me the most. I am so incredibly honored to be bringing you on. Thank you. Thanks for having me again, Joshua. It's my honor to be on with you. You're like, you're an incredible, you're like a one man multinational public interest movement unto yourself. You're incredible. I'm blushing. Uh, thank you so much, Senator. So why don't we, uh, why don't we start by talking uh, a little bit about you and, uh, and about your personal history. You are, uh, are, are a sitting Senator of the United States. Uh, you represent Massachusetts. How did you first get into politics and, uh, and, and why did you first get in? Uh, that's good. So I'm here, Joshua, I'm here in the house that I grew up in. My father drove a truck for the Hood Milk Company. Uh, my mother was a housewife. She, she, um, when she was a senior in high school, her mother died. My grandmother died. So my mother had to take care of her three younger sisters. So she didn't get to college. She was very smart. She could do calculus for fun at the kitchen table, but she didn't get to go to college. That's just the way it used to be. Girls just mm -hmm. you know, didn't get to see their opportunities. And, and so I grew up in this house with my father working for the Hood Milk Company. And, uh, but I always had an interest, Joshua, in, uh, in public service and trying to help mm -hmm. people uh, to, uh, to help them in their lives. And I knew how fortunate I was, even though I was here in this blue collar community in this blue collar house that I was growing up in. But I knew I was fortunate. I knew I had been given opportunities. So I was a commuter to Boston College. Then I was a commuter to Boston College Law School, staying, coming home here every night. Uh, I had twin brothers who were one year younger than me. All three boys were born in one year. Uh, and so in my third year in law school, I said to my brothers, why don't we just, why don't we just run for state representative here? I'll run. If you guys help me, I think we can win. So I announced when I was 25 and I was sworn in at 26. Wow. And then four years later, four years later, we did the same thing for the United States Congress. Uh, and we ran and it's all out of this house. Uh, and I was able to uh, become a United States congressman, one of the youngest congressmen. Uh, but what was motivating me uh, in many ways uh, was all of the kitchen table values that my mother and father had instilled in me. Mm -hmm. uh, all, of the, uh, all of the sense that I could help other people because I had been fortunate. Now, people you know, all have to realize uh, that you're comparing yourself to every other generation that's ever lived in terms of mm. what, who you are and what opportunities you have. So I've tr tried to use those platforms, uh, Joshua, uh, to, uh, to try to do good uh, and to help people, help the environment, help fight against injustice, help fight for health care for everyone. And I've done that throughout my entire career. Well, let's talk about how you've been, uh, you've been involved in a lot of these really important fights. You've been involved in a lot of these fights for quite a while. Uh, I want to talk specifically about gun violence, which is obviously an epidemic in this country. It takes almost 100 lives a day. You've been involved in gun violence for a really long time and in gun violence prevention. Uh, what have you done uh, in the Senate, in the House, in, uh, in, the, state, uh, in the State House? to work on gun violence prevention and what can we continue to do? I know you have a bill in the works right now. Yeah, well, you know, what, what I did back about 25 years ago was uh, the Chinese were selling semi-automatic assault weapons at 80, 80 bucks a piece on the streets of the United States. Uh, <clears throat> I saw that when uh, President Clinton wanted to move to improve uh, uh, economic relations with the um, with the Chinese uh, government, I said, well, as part of this, we're going to have to ban any further importation of uh, the um, uh, of these uh, semi-automatic assault weapons into the United mm -hmm. States of America. So that ban's been in place. It was upwards of 500 um, <clears throat> uh, thousand to a million a year. So it's, it's upwards of 20 million semi-automatic assault weapons that have been banned. So, so I was successful in keeping them out. And they were the gun of choice. They were the inexpensive gun, 80 bucks. An American uh, manufactured gun cost uh, about 800 bucks. So that's what was being used in most of the killings. So what I did yes, was, yes, I did the, said, Mac, the Mac 90. Yeah, you got it. Mm -hmm. So then what happened was, um, I got really interested 
in the fact that the NRA had been successful in blocking any research at the um, uh, Centers for Disease Control on the causes of gun violence in our society. Why is the United States the most violent in the industrialized world? So I fought and fought. And then in December, just four months ago, uh, five months ago, I was successful in adding $25 million to the federal budget uh, so that the CDC can now begin to do the research on the causes of gun violence in our society. And I think ultimately that's a big victory over the NRA, the same way my victory was a big one uh, back 20 years ago. And it's gonna give us a chance ultimately to say that we want NRA to stand for not relevant anymore in American uh, politics. And, and, uh, and, and I'm, I'm kind of building on that in terms of uh, other legislation. I think we should ban assault weapons. Everyone has to have a background check before they can uh, buy a gun. Uh, we have to remove the um, immunity, which, um, which gun manufacturers right now have against being sued uh, if their gun is used uh, in a way that uh, uh, injures people. We have to remove that uh, protection, which they have. So from my perspective, uh, I've been fighting the NRA pretty much my whole life. Uh, and I've had two major victories uh, that no one had up on the scoreboard when I started uh, fighting. And I think that we have a real chance uh, to do more once we get past this political year, uh, because yeah. Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump are wholly owned subsidiaries of the NRA. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a really great chance to do some great work if we can win the Democratic House, Senate, and presidency this year. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and see, one of those big victories is in healthcare. Uh, you've had a very robust response in the Senate to the coronavirus, and you've introduced legislation alongside uh, Senator Bernie Sanders, who I have in my poster right over here, uh, and Kamala Harris to provide a monthly $2,000 to everyone struggling to make ends meet during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so two-part question for you here. First of all, what else should Congress be doing, and what else have you been doing uh, to stop COVID-19? or slow uh, slow it down in this country? And uh, and in general, what can we do to make health care uh, something that's more equitable and something that everybody can have in this country? Thank you. That's a great question. Yeah, so Bernie Sanders and Kamala Harris and I have introduced legislation. And what we're saying is everyone should get $2,000 a month. Uh, that this is going to go on for a long time. So if you're a couple, <clears throat> you get $4,000 uh, to mm -hmm. help you to just tied you through, give you a life raft so that you can come out on the other side of a healthcare crisis that none of, none of these families created, mm -hmm. an economic crisis that none of these families created. So what we're saying is let's err on the side of generosity. Let's say that we wanna help all these families. And by giving them the funding, they'll be able to go out and pay their rent, pay their mortgage, pay for food, pay for prescriptions. They'll be able to take care of their families. So that's what the Senator bucks, Harris. One time, not enough. One time, a one-time twelve hundred dollar check is just not enough. It should be recurring. Uh, people should be able to depend upon it. Uh, and then when uh, this crisis is over, well, then we can end it. But not until then. Uh, the federal government has a responsibility to take care of every family in our, our country. That's what Herbert Hoover did not understand from 1929 to 1933. That's what Franklin Delano Roosevelt understood. And we're at another FDR moment right now, where we have to have policies and approaches that are as big uh, as the problem. And, uh, and so that's what Bernie and uh, Kamala and I are, are proposing, and we're gonna be fighting for it on the floor of the United States Senate. Which is fantastic. Which, where you got back from? today, correct? You just like got in all the today? <clears throat> so I just drove back seven hours. I now drive down on Tuesdays, drive back, you know, seven hour ride. It's like my commute now. Uh, wow. And uh, it's, it's the new world. Everyone is making adjustments. I have to do so as well. But I wanted to cast votes on the Senate floor. What, what uh, the Republicans were doing this week was saying that search history, the Google search history, of every American, even without a warrant, without, mm -hmm. without a warrant. Now, and how you were crazy one of, is that? Uh, I think 15 senators who voted against that. How, thank you. How crazy is that? 
that uh, that we would allow that to happen. So yeah, so I'm a big no on that. Uh, if if there's a reason why anyone's search history should be uh, should be looked at, go to a judge, explain to them why, and then get permission from the judge. But you shouldn't have open access to everybody uh, without any permission being given to you by uh, by a judicial uh, warrant. Senator Markey, you have been uh, kind of throughout your history in government and in public service, your kind of cornerstone has been standing up for people, standing up for regular people. Uh, one of the big ways that you do that is uh, through the Green New Deal. Let's talk about that Green New Deal because you are the Senate sponsor of the Green New Deal, the co-author of the Green New Deal alongside Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Um, and it's one of these big pieces of legislation that we talk about all the time. But I feel like people don't always know what the Green New Deal is. Can you tell me, because you wrote it, what is the Green New Deal? What does it do? And, and how would it change life for millions of Americans? Okay, yeah, thank you. Great question, Joshua. So what Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and I did was to draft the Green New Deal. And so she introduced it in the House. I introduced it in the Senate. It took us about six weeks uh, to put it together. So what we say is basically, number one, the planet is running a fever. There are no emergency rooms for planets. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we don't act now, we're going to see the planet warm by 8 to 10 degrees, and the consequences are going to be catastrophic. The Arctic will melt. Oceans will rise. Storms will become more severe. It, is, it would become a very dangerous place by the year 2100. So what we say is... Number two, we're going to save all of creation by engaging in massive job creation, uh, that we're going to provide the, the, the regulatory and tax programs that ensure that wind and solar and all electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids and, uh, and uh, uh, storage technologies for electricity mm -hmm. and new agricultural uh, strategies all get the funding that they need. Now, when we did that, when we introduced it, Donald Trump and Fox News said, ah, socialism, socialism. And what we say is, well, what do you call 100 years of tax breaks for the oil, gas, and coal mm. industry? If that's not socialism given to the wealthiest industries ever, then what then then there is no such thing so all we're saying is give us the same programs for uh, our wind and solar and electric vehicles and we will bury the fossil fuel industry within a generation but we would to, we took it one step further josh what what mm. alexander and i said was yeah. that we have to do this with intersectionality we have to do it making sure that frontline communities are at the front of the line because black and what brown for everybody watching, what is a frontline community? What do you mean by that? Well, by by frontline community, uh, we're talking about the the, the communities in our uh, in our country who are always there at risk. You know, who are always the mm -hmm. ones that somehow or other are bearing the brunt of the responsibility of of of, of being exposed to risk. So right now, for example, uh, during the coronavirus crisis, uh, we know that many of the people who are being the people who are still driving buses these are the people who are working in supermarkets these are the people who are uh, every day exposing themselves and their families to the risk of of coronavirus so what we're saying is looking back historically is that we know that black and brown people have always been exposed to higher levels of pollution than white families living out in the suburbs so this round what alexandria and i said was let's put them at the front of the line to get the jobs, and we think there will be millions of new jobs that will be created as part of the Green New Deal. Uh, and let's also make sure that we stop just putting the, the most polluting facilities in those communities, in the front line, mm. in, the, in the communities of color uh, in our country. So, uh, so we, we kind of say the plan is running a fever. We can save it with all of the new clean technologies, but let's do it, not just creating jobs, but do it with justice as well. Let's make sure uh, that uh, we are looking back, back historically, and even in the New Deal, by the way, they wrote Social Security so that sharecroppers down south were excluded from Social Security. So we mm -hmm. know 
that uh, many of these programs have always discriminated against uh, minorities, against African Americans, against people of color. And we want to make sure that we say it very explicitly in the Green New Deal, that they will not be excluded. Creating inclusive and equitable policies that are going to hopefully, in theory, start the train towards reversing the effects of climate change. I, uh, I want to shift to talking about your race and what you're running for. You're running for United States Senate. You're the first person, actually, I think we have in the Senate. Uh, and you're currently in office. You're the only person that we've ever had who's currently in office. And the reason specifically that I wanted to bring you on is because you're facing this fierce primary challenge uh, from your right uh, flank, from Representative Joe Kennedy uh, from Massachusetts 4th Congressional District. He seems from what he says to agree with you on a lot of things. He styles himself as a progressive. He uh, says a lot of these kinds of things. What's the biggest, what are the big differences between yourself and, uh, and, uh, and Congressman Kennedy? Well, I'm running um, obviously on, uh, on what I've done, on what I've led on and what I've delivered on in my career. Uh, mm -hmm. And how my background here in this house and this neighborhood that I still live in, this a blue collar neighborhood uh, is what animates me, what drives me. So as we were talking about earlier, um, the Green New Deal. Mm -hmm. That's created not just a, a resolution, but a revolution in the way in which people look uh, at the issue of, of, of the climate crisis. And I've been the leader on that. I was the leader on increasing the fuel economy standards up to 54.5 miles per gallon. That's my law. I was the leader on it, in ensuring that uh, appliances uh, air conditioning, all were dramatically increased in terms of their efficiency. I was the leader on putting in the $25 million to make sure that the Centers for Disease Control uh, would be able to begin the, the research on the causes of gun violence in our society. Uh, I was the leader in the Senate on net neutrality. I introduced, mm -hmm. the, first net neutra I introduced the first net neutrality bill 15 years ago before anyone even knew that there was such a thing as net neutrality. So on each and every one of these issues, I have led and I have delivered. And that's what I'm running on. I'm running on the fights that I've already fought, the victories I've already had, the enemies I've already made that I'm proud of, uh, and the fights in the future uh, that I am looking forward to waging on behalf of uh, the families of our country. You've certainly made some strong and powerful enemies, but you've always been able to rise above and uh, fight on behalf of your constituents in a ton of different ways, whether it's gun violence prevention or the Green New Deal. The list goes on and on and on. Uh, your campaign actually sent me, on your COVID response alone, your campaign sent me a list of like 130 plus things that you have done uh, on, on COVID response. You have done nothing since being elected to office but fight for your constituents. So why is Joe Kennedy running against you? Why do you think he's running? Do you think he should be running? Should he drop out? Look, at uh, campaigns are about choices, and uh, they're going to have a choice in this race. And uh, But I'm proud that Planned Parenthood has endorsed me, that uh, NARAL mm -hmm. has endorsed me, that the League of Conservation Voters, uh, that the NRDC... Uh, that uh, uh, the Sierra Club have all endorsed me in this race. Mm. The Sunrise Movement, the Sunrise Movement, this incredible army of young people across the country who have risen up uh, to be the, uh, the, the new uh, political force in our country for this election in 2020. They have endorsed me. They're campaigning for me. Uh, college Democrats, high school Democrats who are with me uh, generationally on all these issues that I've been leading and fighting for. So... I'm very proud of this campaign that we've put together, uh, and uh, and it's given me a real opportunity to talk, talk about uh, all of the things that I have done in the past and the fights that I'm fighting right now, and if I'm given the opportunity to fights that uh, I will be fighting on the floor of the United States Senate next year. So if people want to support me, if you want to have my back now, I'll have your back on the floor of the United States uh, Senate. You can go to uh, edmarkey.com uh, if you want to help on this campaign. Yeah, let's talk about uh, uh, let's talk about how people can get involved and get excited uh, about your campaign. 
what are what are some different ways that people can get involved in your campaign? Because I know your campaign more than almost any other campaign that I've ever brought on or that I've ever talked to uh, has brought young people into the fold. Even if you are like 16, 15, how can you get involved in the Ed Markey campaign and what can you do uh, to, to help turn out votes for you, Senator? Well, thank you again. I appreciate that. And uh, again, you can go to edmarkey.com uh, uh, where we, we welcome you with open arms uh, and we, we have plenty of work to do. Uh, the, the primary is on September 1st. It's a week before Labor Day, so it's coming up very quickly. Yeah. So anyone who wants to help, we need your help right now. Uh, the campaign is going very well, but at edmarkey.com, you can get in and we'll have plenty of work for you to do and we need you. We need your, uh, we need your support, we need your energy. I got a, uh, a, um, a big question that I ask every single person that I've ever brought on, and this is the last like serious question that I asked. Uh, uh, but uh, right outside of that window that I have over there, uh, there is a 15-year-old neighbor of mine. You know, I'm in California. Why should my 15-year-old neighbor care about your race for Senate in Massachusetts? Well, um... You know, young people have always been the difference makers. Mm -hmm. You know, when it came to uh, the suffragette movement, it was young women. Mm -hmm. When it came to uh, uh, the freedom ride, uh, when the abolitionist movement uh, was beginning, it was young people who were joining. Uh, when the uh, when we were talking about gay marriage, you know, uh, here in Massachusetts, yeah. but all across the country, it was young people who were up and saying we have to change the laws when we were trying to find a way of, um, of ensuring that more people were able to gain access to health care was young people who were up saying it should be a right and not a privilege uh, and so in every single instance it's the new generation of young people who get up and fight and, and on mm. net neutral on net neutrality on the green new deal on taking on the nra and making it obsolete in american politics uh, on all of these issues it's going going to be young people who win and that's what the basis of my campaign is all about it's about these issues mm -hmm. of the future it's the issues that in many instances we haven't won yet but we have to win we don't have a choice and the only way we're going to win is if young people like your 15 year old next door neighbor uh, are willing mm -hmm. to give at least a portion of their time uh, to the effort and any help that people want to give me um again at edmarkey.com i would love your help because I'm going to be on the floor passionately fighting for those issues. You have always fought for young people and are promising to continue to fight for young people. And young people love you. The young people, you're, you're the older candidate in your race, but young people love, love, love Senator Ed Markey. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of people ask me all the time about uh, this very fresh fit of yours. Oh, and it's cropped out, but uh, but you've also got some absolutely kick-ass shoes in there. Are you wearing the shoes now? Well, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take one off. So here it is. I got I got my I got my Air Revolutions right here. Yes. And, uh, and, my, and my Air Revolutions are a big part of my existence. You know, when I was a kid in this house, my mother would always say, you know, Eddie. Your father and I were going to donate your brain to Harvard Medical School as a completely unused human organ. And it's because I would just go down the park and play basketball for five hours a day. She thought I should be doing calculus and I shouldn't need her help to be able to do it. And, uh, and so uh, in the, when I was in the Congress over in the House of Representatives, we have a free throw shooting contest each year. Yeah. So one year, just before I left, I won the free throw shooting contest, 47 out of 50, which I hit. That's amazing. I, well, but it was the practice that I was doing when my mother thought I should be doing my homework. And I want to say, mm -hmm. hey, Ma, it finally paid off in Congress. I won the free throw <laughs> shooting contest wearing, and these are the shoes I was wearing, wearing my Air Revolutions. So, um, so it's a big part of me. Um, and uh, you never kind of lose that that enthusiasm that you have mm. for those passions when you were a kid. And, uh, and for me, my air revolutions are as a, they're as much a part of me as oxygen, uh, in terms of how, uh, 
how I uh, view my day. So I, I wear them, you know, pretty much every day. That you have the trophy from that free throw contest. I I, ha I received a plaque, which I ah, keep in, plaque. in a plaque in my senatorial office. Uh, oh, okay. And and, and I, I wish I wish you had told me because I would have brought it here, because it is one of my proudest possessions. I I wish I. Yeah, man. Uh, Taylor from your campaign told me that you were going to bring it. I'll uh, I'll bring that up with her. Maybe maybe we can do this again closer to your primary date, and we'll uh, we'll make it happen. Done, done. I, I I I can see it right now, and I'm so proud. I would love every one of uh, your uh, friends who are watching this to be able to be able to see why I would be so proud to have been the best free throw shooter amongst congressmen. It's kind of an oxymoron, maybe. Uh, <laughs> Maybe it's not as big a, a thrill as I should derive from it, but uh, I didn't get so many great thrills in high school sitting on the bench on my high school basketball team. Maybe I had a delay. But when you're among members of Congress, a little yeah. easier, perhaps. Yeah, I, 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 my ability to win was enhanced dramatically by no longer being down the park, but being with members of the Congress. Well, I, I, I'll still give you full credit for your athletic ability. Next time... <laughs> Next time we do an interview, we'll make it a uh, we'll make it a free throw shoot. Done, done. You'll probably kick my butt. So, <laughs> you know what we could do? We could actually have. Are you are you a basketball player at all, Josh? I am not. No. no. Ah. And uh, I won the first game. It was out of ten free throws. How many could you hit? So I hit nine. He hit eight in the first one, and then in the second one, he hit eight and I hit seven. And I said, "All right, let's call it even." But I've got the basket right outside my house here, so if you want to, I'd be more than willing to have a uh, have a, a shooting contest with you. You're on. You're on, Senator. Done. I'm totally in. Um, Senator Ed Markey, co-author of the Green New Deal, a long-term progressive champion, thank you so very much for joining me. If you want to get involved in Senator Markey's campaign, uh, how can we do it? edmarkey.com you know that's Ed all I, that's, that's all i have to say and we welcome you welcome everyone who's out there and uh and uh and joshua all i can i just want to say joshua you are about as articulate insightful progressive as anybody in our country and honestly the, the future of our country is in phenomenal hands with people like you and all of your followers, all of the people who you're talking to every week. And I, I just want to tell you how impressed I am and honored uh, to be here with you this evening. Senator Markey, I think coming from you, that means more than coming from anybody else on this planet. Wow, wow. Thank you, Josh. Wow. Um, my ego has been fed for the month. Um, incredible. Senator Markey, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, we have got more candidate conversations coming up. This is not the last one. We're having them every Monday and every Friday. So everybody, you can continue to tune in. Senator Markey, thank you so much. This will be up on IGTV. The political tide has turned on the rising seas. We are reclaiming our leadership on the most important issue facing humankind. We can deliver a Green New Deal for America.
organization. We can deliver a Green New Deal for America. We can deliver wind, solar, offshore wind. It will only be through an historic generational commitment to end climate change that we create the kind of democracy that works for all Americans. Never in our history have the interests of all Americans been so united. I want to thank my fantastic partner, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. We will save all of creation. Our energy future will not be found in the dark of a mine, but in the light of the sun.